Born in Adelaide in 1901, Marcus Lawrence Allen Oliphant, better known as Sir Mark Oliphant, was the eldest of five boys. Early in his life, he began an obsession with chemicals and physics. After graduating from Adelaide University with a degree in physics, he was awarded with a scholarship to join a research team at Cambridge University in England. What's up, players? Uh, I've been up in here trying to get a motherfucking scholarship. While there, he worked under the renowned scientist Ernest Rutherford in the Cavendish Laboratory, the center of the new field of atomic physics. Together, Rutherford and Oliphant undertook path-breaking research that would turn out to be the basis of the world's deadliest bomb by the splitting of the atom in 1932. Oliphant's work there earned him a fellowship of the Royal Society in 1937 and the Chair of Physics at Birmingham University. In the beginning of World War II, while at the University of Birmingham, Oliphant and his team developed the magnetron, a device that greatly improved the efficiency of the radar. The magnetron was of great help to the Allies as it helped Britain sink several German submarines and was used by the United States to decisively defeat the Japanese fleet. This invention is also the technology behind the present-day microwave. Pretty cool, huh? Oliphant was a major promoter to the United States of the use of the atomic bomb. He was a key factor in the establishment of the Manhattan Project and was a major contributor from 1943 until his retirement in 1945, eight months before the atomic bomb was dropped. Although he and several of the scientists working on the project knew the bomb was capable of mass destruction, they justified their actions by saying it was necessary to build the bomb before the Germans, a view also shared by Albert Einstein. It was not until after the bomb was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki that Oliphant discovered the true casualties of the bombs, which sparked his change of view and harsh criticism of using nuclear power in times of conflict. He remarked that he was quoted, sort of proud that the bomb had worked and absolutely appalled at what it had done to human beings. Ron Burgundy perfectly sums up Oliphant's emotion. <laughs> I, I, don't under, I didn't understand a one word you said. Ron, are you okay? Ron. <laughs> Ron, wh where are you? I'm in a glass case of emotion! Mark broke away from military work and openly expressed that scientists must become more apprehensive about the social effects of their work. He also began opposition to the use of nuclear weapons by becoming a member of the Pugwash movement and attended several Pugwash conferences on science and world affairs, an international organization that aims at reducing the danger of armed conflicts. After the war, Mark moved back to Australia to help Australia's scientific presence throughout the world. He helped found the Australian National University in Canberra and is also the founder of the Australian Academy of Science in 1954. Throughout his time away from Australia, he realized that his country had no international voice in the scientific community and it offered little opportunity. You just don't get it, do you? You don't. It's no hassle. But I'm, all I'm saying, they're gonna get a. I, I'm just which, which, knock knock. Who's there? While conducting research and developing inventions in Australia, countries overseas and their scientific progress continually perplexed Oliphant and were outperforming his own inventions. Whatever setback he experienced, Oliphant would always claim that if he were overseas, it would not have happened due to better equipment, facilities, expertise, and support. What is this? A center for ants! Sir Mark began to change the way Australians view scientific research and the overall effects it has on their country. Today, Australia's scientific research is considered world class and is all due to Oliphant's persistence and achievements. Mark Oliphant soon became Mark o Sir Mark Oliphant when knighted by the Queen in 1959. By 1970, Oliphant retired from scientific research and was appointed Governor of South Australia from 1971 until 1976. During his time in office, he remained outspoken with regards to environmental issues, nuclear power, and scientific research in Australia. On the 17th of July in 2000, at the age of 98, Sir Mark Oliphant died of natural causes. Although deceased, his legacy lives on not only in Australia, but also throughout the scientific world. In Australia, he brought scientific opportunities and helped start the beginning of world-class scientific research.